A demonstration of the latest British power-controlled farm machinery attracts a crowd of interested spectators, including the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Lands. With this method of linkage, the implement becomes an integral part of the tractor and is controlled from the driving seat. Taking corners is easy. Demolition work is merely incidental. With the hydraulic power lift, the plough can be raised or lowered underway, giving greater manoeuvrability in confined areas. Should an underground obstruction be met, the machine stops automatically, the operator uses the hydraulic power lift to raise the plough, drives past the obstruction, lowers away, and continues with the least possible delay. Britain's export drive makes available to New Zealand farmers some much-needed high-grade agricultural machinery. A large field starts from the New Zealand Cross Country Championships held at Motor Carrara Racecourse in Canterbury. Sixteen teams take part in the event. The six and a quarter mile course is well studded with obstacles to test the stamina of the runners. fairly well bunched as they take the first steep uphill grade of the journey. At the top of the hill, the order is Hoskins Auckland, Burroughs Otago, Taylor Wellington and Hawke Wellington. The hill has slowed down some of the runners and as they come through the trees, the field is beginning to string out. There seem to be various techniques for negotiating a five-barred gate with varying stages of success. M. Taylor of Wellington establishes a handy lead over the rest of the field. The nearest competitors are G. Hoskins Auckland and J. R. Clark, the Canterbury captain. The placing in the team's event was Wellington, Auckland, Otago, but the race resulted in an individual triumph for Noel Taylor of Wellington, who finished the six and a quarter miles in just under 35 minutes. 321 yards behind is George Hoskins of Auckland in second place. On their recent official tour of the islands, their excellencies Sir Bernard and Lady Freiburg called first at the independent kingdom of Tonga. They were met by the British consul who introduced members of Queen Salote's cabinet to them. After meeting the cabinet ministers, the vice-regal party drove to the royal palace to meet Queen Salote and later sat on either side of the queen at an open-air feast given by her and their honor. From Tonga, their excellencies went to Rarotonga, the seat of the New Zealand Cook Islands administration, and the governor general met island officials and returned servicemen and had a special word for the boys' brigade. <laughs> A garden party at the Rarotonga residency gave Sir Bernard and Lady Freiburg an opportunity to meet the local people in a less official atmosphere. The Navy also met the local people. At Aitutaki, Bologna's commanding officer, Captain Hammersley Johnson, presented four of the ship's flags to a native school. It was a great occasion for the pupils and also for the teaching staff who were introduced to Sir Bernard and Lady Freiburg. After a short stay at Aitutaki, the party left the Cook Islands to rejoin Bologna and continue their tour of New Zealand administered territories. With the Governor General's standard flying, Bologna sailed on the long leg of the cruise from the Cook Islands to Western Samar and the Tokelaus. While at sea, the Governor-General took an interest in the ship's activities and read the lesson at divine service. After many days steaming, Bologna came in sight of land again. 
It was the rugged outline of Upolo, the main island of Western Samoa, and Bologna headed for Apia, the capital. Out from the shore to meet the cruiser came Samoan longboats, the modern descendants of the native war canoes, some flying the new Samoan flag, red and blue with a white southern cross. The Governor General left Bologna to go ashore, where he was met with full ceremony by the Samoan chiefs and elders. After the official welcome, the Samoan people brought gifts of food from the villagers. One of the Governor-General's first acts was to invest Colonel Volker, the High Commissioner of Samoa, with the DSO he won when commanding Fijian troops in the Solomons. Also invested was Alistair Stewart of New Zealand, who won the DCM for gallantry in North Africa when a sergeant in the army. In the wooded grounds of Malifa School, over 3,000 children assembled to meet their excellencies. The Governor-General walked through the grounds among the children accompanied by Colonel Volker, and then the official party was entertained with a dance by the senior girls of the school. From the crowds and ceremony of Samoa, the Viceregal Party visited the nearby but lonely Tokelau Islands. As these islands are looked after for New Zealand by the Samoan administration, Colonel Volker accompanied their excellencies, who were met by Father Mackay, a New Zealander who is the local missionary. Through an interpreter, Sir Bernard Freiburg addressed the island people and brought them messages from the king. After the speeches, a Tokelau canoe dance was given by the men of the island. This was the last official ceremony, and their excellencies left the Tokelaus to return to New Zealand. Sir Bernard and Lady Freiburg had been warmly welcomed by the islanders wherever they went, and their visit did much to strengthen the ties of loyalty and friendship between New Zealand and her Pacific Island territories.